Welcome to this July bullet journal plan with me video. Today we're gonna create the first monthly setup in my new gorgeous Mellow Days journal. If you're interested in the beginning setup, I'll link that video to the description. But today we're gonna focus on this bright and summery July theme. But without further introductions, let's jump right into the cover spread. And we're gonna start today with this bigger gouache painting of this summery pond forest scenery with this summery lady as the main focus. I actually filmed this part before I got my new journal. So we're doing this on a separate piece of watercolor paper. With gouache, the paper quality is not that important, but any sturdier paper will ensure that there won't be any wrinkling from the water. I'm using my well-loved Holbein gouache paints, but any paints you have at home will work for this. And we're gonna get started by quickly adding some pencil lines. I didn't spend too much time on this step in the video because you can't really see what I'm doing here. And most of you skip the pencil sketching part anyway. I know it's not that interesting, but it does give you this confidence boost when you at least have some idea of what's supposed to be on the paper before you go in with the paints, which are much more difficult to erase and do over. But now that we have marked some of the main outlines, like where the pond ends in the picture and the main shape of the girl, some indication for the path into the forest maybe, now we can finally take out the paints and start with the first background layer. I actually started with this very light blue shade because this will be the lightest color in the whole top part of the picture. It's the shade that's supposed to show through the tree branches in the end. So that's why we'll just lay it down first so that we remember not to cover this whole area with other paints. This will also create the highlight in the water reflection. So that's why we're gonna apply some of this color also to the lower part. But then we can get started with all the green tones. I feel like the first layer, especially in a painting like this where there's quite a lot of difference in the colors, like I wanted some areas of this painting to be very dark and some to be very bright and look like they are highlighted with sunlight. So because of that strong contrast and difference in these shades, this first layer will look a little bit messy. It might also be a little bit difficult to keep track of what colors you want to go wear. But luckily, the joy of gouache painting is that we can always paint over these first layers and change whatever we're not happy with. In general, I try to focus the dark colors on the lower part of the forest. So you can imagine that the space between the trees in the distance is one that's mostly in shadow. And that's why we add a lot of darkness there. And then the top parts of the trees and some of the open area in the ground are going to be much lighter and hit by the sunlight. I'm not going to lie though, I definitely felt a little bit lost at this stage. But it's just one of those things where you need to push through the ugly stage to get to the other side.
But after I had pretty much covered all the empty space here, I'm actually so upset because I forgot to push record for this next step where I basically just smudged the colors together in this whole upper half of the painting. I tried to show you a little bit of how I did it here after I realized I wasn't recording and we are also going to do this later so you can kind of see what's going on. So what you want to do is to clean your brush a little bit and take just very little water on it and then you can start to kind of blend the edges and different shades together. It takes some time and patience but I think this smoother appearance almost doesn't look like it's painted with wash. For me, this type of look resembles almost oil paintings. So even though blending is not necessarily the easiest thing to do with wash, it is still possible and you're able to create these smoother areas. We'll still work on this top part later, but now I thought it was a good moment to jump to the lower half so here we'll first paint some of these bigger white flowers. I really wanted there to be some yellow accents in this painting because this is actually part of the new summer collection over on my shop and the collection has some lemons and white flowers. So even though this picture doesn't have lemons, I still wanted to tie it together with those matching colors. And while talking about my shop, I quickly want to mention that there is also a sale going on at the moment. It's only up for a few more days. And after that, my shop will go on a short summer holiday during which I'll transfer the whole site to a new website provider. So I thought doing that will be easier if I don't need to worry about the access to the whole website and so on. But anyway, that's that. So these flowers are really simple to paint. We're going to start with these light, messy dots and then add some details to them later. But first, I was itching to cover the rest of the empty area here in this painting, which is for the girl. I know I'm jumping around here quite a lot, but please bear with me. <laughs> here I just applied the base layers for the dress and the summer hat. And then after having some idea of the colors there, we can get back to finishing the flowers. So I started by adding lots of these small leaves here and there, so adding some different shades to create highlights and shadows around the flowers. The detailing phase is the one where you want to take out your finer, smaller brushes and then you can kind of decide for yourself how detailed and realistic you want to go here. After I had added some leaves here, I went over to the flower plops with some lighter color. I think I was using pure white. So we're not really painting flowers here. We're just adding some texture on top of the background layer, which will start to look a little bit like overlapping petals maybe. And yeah, you could spend more time to perfect the shapes and stuff, but it wasn't really the style I was going for in this painting. I wanted it to be a little bit looser, smudgier, even more painting-like than something super defined and realistic. But then we're going to do the same detailing for the whole rest of the painting. I was using some different tones of these white gray shades to add folds and shadows into the dress. And then we're adding a little bit more definition to the forest in the background. And lastly, adding some plants and details to the water.
To be honest, I think I could have spent a little bit more time perfecting everything here, but I knew that I'm going to do that anyway on a computer in my digital editing program. Because as I said, I wanted to add this painting to my shop, so it definitely required some final polishing. Now, I know that this is way beyond the level of effort most people will spend on their bullet journal, but the reason why I decided to include this part in the video is that there are always some of you who find it interesting to see what's happening behind the scenes and what's the process I go through when I create these products. So this is just a quick summary of that and I hope you'll find it interesting or even helpful. So scanning a painting usually destroys all the colors, which means that first you'll need to fix them, add contrast and stuff like that. And then I started to fix some of the messier parts. So for example, the girl's hat and clothes weren't exactly what I wanted. I also felt like the hair was a bit unbalanced on one side, so I gave her some extensions. And a trick I like to use is flipping the image as the mirror version. You can do the same thing by literally taking your painting and looking at it from a mirror. This will usually really show you where you've messed up with the balance or dimensions or just really bring out some details you've gotten blind to. So I highly recommend trying that out even though it might be a bit depressing sometimes, <laughs> at least from my own experience. But then lastly, something I personally like to do is to add some glow to the painting. I try not to overdo it to still keep the hand-painted appearance, but I just think that some dots and bright glow takes the image to another level. Anyway, I know we've been here for a while and this is all not just strictly related to blood journaling. So after we have the final edited version all printed and ready to go, I just glued it to my journal and then we can move on to the next page. I wanted to do something quite different on this next page. So I have a bunch of these paper patterns that I sell on my shop and I thought I could use them together with some washi tapes and random printed colors I have saved to create this some sort of collage to the background. I usually try to avoid using my own products in the videos because I feel a little bit weird doing it. But sometimes there are some theme styles that I really want to create and that is quite hard to achieve without any other products. So I think that was the case this month. I really hope you don't mind. We do have some more painting on the next pages as well. So I hope there will still be a little bit something for everyone. But yeah, I had so much fun combining these different patterns and colors. It created a very different look to this page. I haven't really done anything like this before. And then I chose to go with this grid paper to write the July title and the calendar. I think it stood out well enough from the background. And the font I'm using here is called American Typewriter. It's a free font and you can find the whole alphabet by just googling the name, so it's really easy to use for any titles. But after that's done, it finally finishes up the whole cover spread. I actually liked how this turned out overall. Very summery and these fresh but still neutral colors are something I've been very into recently. So yeah, I hope you like this too. But now let's move on and on this next spread, I wanted to combine a very simple monthly planning section with the big monthly calendar just because I think I won't use my bullet journal that much in July. I'm actually gonna take a short summer holiday for the first time in I don't even know how many years. So I'll do a quick trip to Finland to visit my family first and then take a few days off at home too. This July actually marks five years on this channel. So I started making bullet journal videos exactly five years ago. 
a lot has happened in that five years. First of all, I can't believe that I'm able to do this full time. When I first started, I would have never guessed that that will happen. I also had no plans to start a shop or anything like that. So I'm just so grateful for you guys for really being there for me and always motivating me to keep going and, you know, trying new things. I know there are some of you who've stuck around for a long time. I see you in the comment section and it just means the world to me. And even if you are a new viewer, it still means so much to have you guys here. So yeah, thank you so much. But before this gets too emotional, let's focus on this bread again. So I started by cutting these two boxes out of this paper that I've printed out. But before we apply any of these to the page, we are going to paint some watercolor flowers underneath. Sorry for my dirty watercolor palette, by the way. I try to remember the clean for the videos, but the truth is that it's very convenient to leave these color plops on the palette because you can reuse them later or to help blend other colors. But anyway, seeing how watercolors work on this new notebook is what I've been the most interested to figure out. So we're gonna paint a few of these white apple flower branches on this spread. I very lightly had sketched these out too. And if you don't want to sketch the whole thing, at least figuring out the placement for the flowers will help you out because we don't want to overlap those areas with the green shades. So I tried to work here very much how I would work on a regular watercolor paper by adding some different shades of green and letting them kind of melt together. And I must say that I was pretty impressed by this paper. I didn't get almost any wrinkling that you would get in a regular bullet journal and the colors blended much better than with the journals I've used in the past. So this journal is by Mellow Days and it has dotted watercolor paper. So I'd say that that's kind of the selling point of this whole journal and I've been very excited to get my hands on it. When it comes to painting the white flowers, I just use some very neutral gray tones to kind of define the outlines of the petals. And then I added some shadowing, especially to the petals that are kind of underneath the other ones. So if you think about it, those are usually the ones that have some shadows in them. And then I also think that the inner section usually has a little bit more darkness than the outer parts of the flowers. I also added some white lines on these flowers with this acrylic paint pen. I had to go over the same lines a few times because the color kept sinking into the watercolors for some reason, but I think eventually it's a very easy way to add a few more details to any simple leaves like this. But after the watercoloring part is done, we're just gonna add all these different elements to the page to finish it out. I wanted to change up the title from the previous spread, so I went with this cursive July title instead. This actually didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, so to kind of fix the mistake, I just went over the whole title with this thicker pen that created more of this even monoline appearance. But anyway, after that, I just wrote out the whole calendar and then jumped to the left side where we have these two monthly planning sections. So at the top, I just wanted to list the three most important things that I need to get done in July. I really like to narrow things down to only a few important things because that really helps me to not take too much on my plate at once. And then this lower box will just be for me to write something about my monthly focus. So this will just be a place for me to write some sort of plan. What are my expectations and so on. And the goal again is to really keep things simple and decide beforehand which things I want to focus on. 
But that finally finishes up this very simple monthly spread. And now let's move on and we'll actually create all the rest of the spreads in this bigger Dutch door layout where there will be smaller ones inside of this bigger Dutch door and some flower patterns framing the sides. So I thought it would be easier to first cut all of these pages so that I wouldn't make a mistake of what to add where. So I only cut a very narrow piece out of the first page and then we'll make three of these smaller Dutch doors that open inside of the first one. I hope this all makes sense. The small pages will be for the weekly boxes and then we'll use the outer spreads for something else. And after I had cut all these different pages, I rounded all the corners with this corner rounding tool that I've bought from Amazon. The round corners make such a difference in my opinion because they match with the corners of the notebook. So somehow it looks like these pages came like this from the start. But anyway, after we have cut all the pages, I attached these long stripes of the flower pattern. To the outer edges of this section. You could also use washi tapes or colored papers for this or just paint the sides with wash paints. I've done that in the past too and it works perfectly fine. So now these patterns show on the whole section here which I thought looked really nice. But anyway, then we can jump to this first spread and I decided to add some simple decorations here again. So I went with this similar mix and match approach as we did in the cover spread. If you have different washi tapes or decoration papers at home, I highly recommend you to try out something like this. It was so much fun to find these combinations and arrange them in different ways. And it doesn't take much time either. But then we get to the main purpose of this spread, which is to be my one year from now letter to myself. If you're new around here, you might not know yet that this is kind of a tradition here of my channel. So every July for the past few years, I've had this kind of spread where I write something to my next year self. I often end up describing something that's currently going on in my life, some thoughts and feelings I have, and then I try to do some careful guessing on what's happening in my life in one year. It's very fun to read these letters. I usually don't remember anything I wrote. So yeah, it's a fun and quite eye-opening tradition as well. So that's all I'm gonna use this space for. And then let's flip to this inner section in the Dutch door layout, which will be for the weekly pages. I wanted to start here first with some watercolor leaves and flowers again. The good thing about these Dutch door layouts is that if you want to paint something in your bullet journal, but you don't have time to do that every week, this way we can enjoy the painting for the full month. It might also be a good idea to have some kind of bigger drawing or painting on a page like this, which could be more of a work in progress for the whole month. So if you don't have time to do it all at once, you could do that and slowly work your way through it. When I started bullet journaling over five years ago, the art aspect was one of my main goals with it. I think having that consistent monthly practice of any type of drawing or painting has been so beneficial for me. I think it really is the perfect method to get some practice in and get better over time. But it also doesn't mean that you are required to do any art stuff for your bullet journal. It can be as simple, as practical as you want it to be. And all these videos on YouTube are just to give you ideas and inspiration. But eventually you should do whatever suits the best for your life.
but yeah i didn't really do anything that exciting on this spread so as i mentioned before i don't know how much i'll need my bullet journal in july especially at the beginning of the month so some of these weeks might stay empty and all I have here this time are just these daily boxes to write any task lists or appointments and I left this last page empty for now just in case I won't use my journal for one week maybe and I would like to have some empty room to write some possible notes or something like that. So yeah, that's it about the simple weekly layout this time. And now we can flip ourselves over to the last spread, which will be for the monthly review. So we can start with the same text pattern to keep everything cohesive. And then I thought this color palette looked really nice on the previous pages. So I added one here again. I think overall color palettes are such a great way to add a small easy accent to pretty much any page. I think it looks really sophisticated and adds this aesthetic touch. But anyway, I use these review pages to reflect on the whole month. So I usually fill these at the very end of the month and kind of look back to see what happened. I often like to list some of my favorite things. And I also wanted to add a knitting progress thing here this time. I love knitting. I just finished my first summer shirt of the year, which also might be my last because I'm just way more excited about the fall and winter knits. But anyway, then on this second page, I made this rating thing. So I think something like this is just a very efficient way to review the whole month. So I listed some of these different areas of my life and then we can review those on a scale from 1 to 10. And then lastly, I wanted to leave some room to just write about whatever is on my mind at the moment. This can be just overall feelings, any concerns, or maybe even some business or work related ideas I've had on my mind. I just like to write stuff like this out on a regular basis and it also helps me to bring some things to the surface that I should work on moving forward. But after the review spread is done, that finishes up this pretty simple July theme. I really felt like taking it easy this month and I feel like this is exactly the type of setup I'll need. I really hope you got some new ideas out of this as well. And so I will be taking a few weeks off, so I'm not sure if there will be a painting video in July. It will really depend on everything else, but I'll definitely be back with a reading journal update that might be a little bit later than usual, so I'll probably post that one around mid-July. But I think that's all for today. If this was your first time around here and you'd like to stay tuned for more, definitely consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.